I've often wondered what sort of picture the name Northwoods makes in the minds of people who've never been up there. <laughs> Whatever their conception, it can't begin to live up to the beauties of this grand country of evergreen forests, gleaming lakes, sweeping majestically across three states. Now here's a map of the region. And if you'll just look over my shoulder for a minute, I'll show you some of the better known localities. Over here to the right are the Three Lakes districts. Eagle River. And Land Lakes. Here are Rhinelander. Woodruff and Monaco, Flambeau and Manitowish District. Over here we find Spooner, Hayward and Drummond. Did you ever imagine that there could be so many lakes in an area that size? And the map can't begin to show them all. Little lakes and big lakes, more than 7,000 of them. 10,000 miles of sparkling, tumbling trout streams. And marching up to their banks, the stately pines, hemlocks and spruce in endless ranks. Oh, I wish you could look down on this glorious country from the air. There's a thought. Why not? Let's get up there about a mile, where you can get a real bird's eye view of what it's like. Here we are, up over a mile, with the myriad lakes and vast forests of our map come to life. Now we'll drop a bit and get a nearer view. Isn't it an inspiring sight? The forests and lakes stretching away as far as the eye can see, like a mantle of soft green splashed with silver. As we get lower, now and again the roof of a cottage or a boat landing give evidence that people live in this delightful country. And now we'll drop down on the shore of one of these thousands of lakes and see what it's like close up. Nestling along the shores of Wisconsin lakes are thousands of attractive resorts offering every sort of accommodation, everything from stately lodges with the appointments and service of metropolitan hotels to snug one-room cabins where you run things to suit yourself. These resorts have distinctive personalities. Perhaps they are reflections of the owners or the guests who patronize them. At any rate, you'll find them rather definitely classifying as to types of guests. Some seem to appeal to quieter, more subtle folk who, along with a love of natural beauty, appreciate the comforts of life and can do with the exercise they get in a rocking chair. But you'll find that generally this sort of resort also provides everything for the younger people's diversion too. Other resorts draw those who go in for fishing and hunting in a serious way. And still others stress music, dancing, and the social side. In every district, you can find just what you want at what you consider your price. Children love this friendly region. Away from hot baking streets, in the clear, pure air, tinged with the healthy fragrance of the pines, the great trees, leafy trails, and clean sandy beaches make a new sort of playground that never grows tiresome. And the beneficent sun pours all the vitamins from A to Z into active little bodies by day, while cool nights lull them to early sound slumber. At most of the resorts, you find tennis courts, many of them fast and sporty, and imagine playing in such romantic settings. And an old friend, lawn billiards, takes on new interest when played on the shore of a lake with the breezes blowing. If you like this on shipboard, and most people do, how much more so in this environment? And incidentally, have you noticed the informality of dress up here? <laughs> What's comfortable is the rigor. Good old barnyard golf. Looks like Father's and Son's Day. 
And does that youngster throw a mean horseshoe? Table tennis to you. Played to the accompaniment of rustling trees, dappled sand, and soothing breezes. There's plenty to keep the little ones happy and busy. Sand, swings, Indian teepees, safe, shallow beaches. But they like their own play best, and soon they are reliving the romances of Indian days. Swimming is at its best in Wisconsin lakes. Sandy beaches, clear, pure water, and comfortable temperatures lure all the members of the family to enjoy hours of this fascinating sport. At many resorts, there are elaborate diving stands, floats, and every facility to add to the pleasure of the swimmer. Boots and saddles, and what an ideal country for it. Canter away by yourself, or join a party, and you will find opening before you miles and miles of romantic winding trails through cool green aisles of lofty sighing trees. Trails retracing ancient paths blazed by Indians and woodsmen when the land was young. Good mounts are available at many of the resorts or will be found conveniently nearby. With beauty and variety on every side, and picturesque woodsmen, guides, and Indians for models, is it any wonder that so many artists come up here for inspiration and work? Practically anywhere you go in the north woods of Wisconsin, you will find a golf course at your back door or only a few minutes away. And what courses many of them are. You never dug a divot in more picturesque surroundings. Greens overlooking rippling, sparkling lakes. Fairways lined with stately whispering trees. So much sheer beauty that at first one may be inclined to dawdle at the game and just drink in the exquisite scene. But the breath of a breeze on your cheek the ever-present scent of the pines, the glorious air and the clear, friendly sunlight put pep in your step and spring in your swing, and you feel that perhaps you can really do something about bettering your game. There's the hospitality about the clubhouses that gives you a pleasant, homey feeling when you wind up at the 19th hole. And now, it's time for fish stories. But there's no need to exaggerate them up here. Whether your fancy goes to a tussle with bass, pickerel, trout, or the elusive muskie, you'll be accommodated. This happy man came up to play golf, was induced to do a little fishing, and look what happened. That baby weighed 30-odd pounds. You should see Northwood's appetites at their peaks. They come up pallid and jaded, but they go away shaming a wolf. Most resorts are famous not only for excellence of food, but lots and lots of quantity. Speaking of Northwood's appetites, here's an example. This little fellow was deserted by his mother, and everybody just naturally adopted him. And it looks as if he had adopted them. And does he know his mealtime? Although he runs wild, and his home is somewhere in the depths of the woods, he shows up so regularly for each that you could set your watch by his arrival. Then, what he wants and expects is plenty of nourishment. After he's had his rations, and it takes a lot to fill a hungry, growing young deer, he ambles down to the lake for a leisurely drink and a look around. Then, he picks himself a nice, quiet retreat for a nap. I don't know whether you've guessed it, but there's no grander place in the world to loaf than the North Woods. Just sit there in the mellow sunlight and soak up nature's favorite restoratives. Don't waste any energy, except at mealtimes. Follow this program faithfully for a few days, and you'll come home with one of those prize appetites I mentioned a little while back. Whenever four or more bridge enthusiasts get together, something like this is the inevitable result. And where could one find more delightful surroundings to play a few rubbers than on the broad verandas of a woodland club or a hospitable lodge? 
At many resorts, special entertainment features are arranged for the guests. Now here's a happy party about to leave for a straw ride with a fish fry on the shore of a nearby lake as the objective. As soon, as soon as they get that lady of Birch and Aunt Fortune's loaded, we'll be on our way, singing to the accompaniment of the sprightly strains of the guide's accordion. And here we are, finding that preparations are already underway as evidenced by the delicious odors rising from all around us. After a ride and hike through a mile or two of wooded roads, probably the most tantalizing, delightful fragrance in the world is that of fresh fish when frying over an open fire. <laughs> it's worthwhile to know how they do it, for you never eat fish cooked so appetizingly. First, they fry plenty of bacon for the grease, and into this sizzling bath plop the fillets of the fish, which happen to be pike just out of the lake. The morsels of fish are taking on that rich golden color and it won't be long now. There's another delectable aroma filling the air, the coffee. Maybe it's something about the air up here, but coffee never smelled so good before. Come and get it, is the call. And how they come. It's catch as catch can, buffet service, and you don't hear anyone arguing about what to select. They choose to have some of everything there is and plenty of it. If we stayed to watch, we'd see many a repeater in that line. <laughs> Just notice the dainty portions they take. Judge for yourself how they're enjoying everything. Up in this clear, cool, invigorating air, people who have finicky, fussy appetites back home find a new savor in anything that's put before them. Nature stands at the cook's elbow. And the result is something that can't be equaled in the kitchens of the world's most pretentious hotels. Now let's join another party. This time a group from some of the many summer homes and cottages which dot the shores of the lakes. They're getting ready for a spin across the sun-kissed waters with the ever-ready outboard motors putt-putting a cheerful staccato accompaniment and fresh little breezes caressing their faces. It's a paradise for motorboating, and practically all summer residents have some sort of power boats, and most resorts supply them to guests at very moderate rentals. Here's a party of Boy Scouts from St. Louis. Look like they're having a good time, don't they? Their camp is nearby. All through the North Woods, one finds such camps, with boys from every part of the country enjoying the fascinating, healthful, out-of-door life. This particular group is portaging a bark canoe modeled after those used in the early days. Now we are on a picturesque channel between connecting lakes, calm, placid waters, and tranquil beauty and tree-fringed shores. Billowy, pearly clouds etched against them the soft green band of the trees. Is it the sport itself? or their sense of beauty that impels fishermen to pick spots like this. The lakes and rivers are frequently traveled water highways, along which pass light-hearted parties exchanging gay salutations as they flit by. We seem alone with nature on this wide expanse of water, yet across there, embowered in the trees along the shore, are charming private summer homes. Let's get a glimpse of some of these homes which are found along the shores of the lakes all through the North Woods. Some are modest little places, others more impressive. And some great dignified establishments like mansions transplanted from the boulevards. Yet, whether it's a palace or a shack, ownership of a home up here gives you equal enjoyment of the beauties of the North Woods. And do you know that hay fever just isn't up here? 
the pines and spruces in the crystal air exert some sort of magic that relieves sufferers the minute they arrive. So we resume our sightseeing course down the lakes, one enchanting lake opening into another, miles and miles of delightful travel straight away. But let's land and take a look around on shore. Exploring is great fun, and there are no keep off the grass signs anywhere around up here. Well, look who's here. Porcupines usually act rather tame and quite friendly and are easy to approach. It's quite safe to go up close to them, for contrary to popular belief, they cannot throw or shoot their quills. But use discretion when tempted to pat them on the back. And if your dog is along, make sure that he minds his own business. A striking scene. War canoes with crews of young girls, graceful shadows silhouetted against the sparkling waters. They are members of a girls' camp, and these canoe evolutions are part of a water carnival presented by the children. Decorated floats now glide into the pageant. Carefully prepared by the girls, they are symbolical of scenes, serious or comic, as fancy has dictated. In that impressive natural amphitheater along the shore, parents and friends of the youngsters sit and watch their accomplishments with pride and amazement. And well they may, for here's a thrill. Skimming, swaying, balancing, scudding along at express speed, with spray flying and the spume of the wake breaking behind. The blood coursing, nerves tingling, senses alert to the slightest deviation of the boat ahead. Our admiration to the glorious physical attainments of these young people and the environment that makes them possible. Of course, only the better swimmers are permitted to aquaplane. But it is so fascinating that it is the only incentive many of them need to improve their swimming skill. Now, if you've been curious to know the best way to get off a speeding aquaplane, this young lady demonstrates. Try this sometime, if you think it doesn't take an exacting sense of equilibrium. Hands off the handlebars and everything. And are these youngsters proud and willing to show off as long as there's a boat to tow them and someone to watch? Here's a noted visitor, Sam Camel, nationally known writer, lecturer, and protector of wildlife in the North Woods, who is expressing his philosophy to a group of the campers and friends. Let's listen in on his talk for a minute. There is no pleasure offered me in the North Country that is more valued than the privilege of addressing groups of camp girls and boys who are learning to enter nature lore and nature joy on a proper basis. I'm happy indeed to see that the modern trend is away from the killing habit in nature. We are learning that there is a far better use for the forest and the forest creatures than to destroy the forest or to kill the animals. It's an important thing that you learn true joy at this stage in your lives. For young folks to realize what real nature joy is, is the greatest gift that they can acquire at this stage of their lives. For the same pleasures that you enjoy in the outdoors now will be giving you pleasure later in life, and that cannot be said for the other enjoyments offered by urban environments. It's just as much fun to build a campfire or pitch a camp or identify a bird or learn to swim or paddle a canoe when you're 60 years old as it is when you're 16. And I certainly hope that you'll hold steadfastly to that enjoyment. For there is nothing in the world that will give you as much pleasure with as little effort and with as little destruction and loss as outdoor enjoyment. Mr. Camel demonstrates how readily wildlife responds to kindness and how easily their intelligence is aroused. A chipmunk one of the shyest animals in the woods becomes so tame and friendly that he puts on a miniature circus for us. If you are fortunate enough to hear Mr. Camel's lecture, you may see this very picture he is taking. And by the way, if you enjoy taking pictures, be sure to have your camera and plenty of film along while in the North Woods. For with material on every side, you'll soon fill your scrapbook with happy memories. Those who love to hike find the lure of picturesque trails everywhere up here 
leafy paths, leading away uphill and down through vistas of the forest and banks alive with wildflowers. There's something poetically appropriate about a canoe on these lakes and rivers. We are indebted to the red man for his silent, effortless grace of motion. It was the earliest means of transportation that we know about in this land. The first white adventurers, the voyageurs, adopted it for their own. And today, as then, it belongs in the picture. A picture of peaceful, untroubled waters, overhanging trees, and a canoe gliding noiselessly with scarcely a ripple into the scene. Sharp blasts from a whistle announce a big event, the arrival of the postman. Up here, he uses a boat and travels over 60 miles daily, making his round of the lakes. The children come a-running, and even the dogs are excited. Here are letters, packages, and yesterday's papers telling how hot it was in the city. The mailman is our bond with home and always welcome. The ingenuity of young America is always up to something. Now, how's this for an idea? This young fellow improvised a homemade diving helmet from the end of an old kitchen hot water tank with a pal to operate the air supply provided by a small gasoline motor-driven pump. He goes safely to depths of as much as 25 feet and can stay below as long as he desires. However, as these spring-fed northern lakes get pretty cold that far down, such dives are usually of short duration. The life up here is a stimulus to development, mental as well as physical, and sends the young folk back to school work of the winter months with a decided advantage over their less fortunate schoolmates. Seems like painting a lily to scrub a youngster that lives in the water, but maybe sister thinks it's Saturday. The kids become virtual amphibians, as much at home in the water as on land, diving and swimming like little seals. Everything is a game, including the old challenge, the last one in is it. Then dogs and all, it's a mad scramble and a race for the raft. On, off, diving, leaping, jumping, climbing back, the dogs barking and following the lead of the children. Oh, it's furious, glorious fun. The finest kind of exercise, building for these girls and boys, physical stamina and resistance, so valuable in the race for life. But here's another kind of game. Tag played in speedy motorboats. Watch them. Thrilling, isn't it? <laughs> but it isn't as dangerous as it looks. The wide-beamed power boats favored up here are almost impossible to upset. Ship a little spray? Why, of course, on those turns when you come about on one gunnel. But that only adds to the exhilaration. And after all, if there should be a spill, it wouldn't mean anything to young athletes who swim as well as all do up here. The kids talk it over and decide they're going to have some speed, too. They have rigged up a homemade aquaplane of boards and cross pieces, hooked onto a boat with a length of rope. If you think it takes skill on a regular aquaplane, you should try to balance on this one. Even with lots of practice and dexterity, there are plenty of unexpected duckings. For example, this young lady didn't intend to fall off, particularly right in front of the camera. But only the star swimmers among the children are permitted on such extemporized planes, and there's always an inflated inner tube along in the boat as a precaution. You'll see children up there as expert on these aquaplanes as the more publicized surfboard riders of the Southern California waters.
After such a strenuous workout, a delightful rest and sun bath before the reluctant response to mother's insistent summons. Then, perhaps a quiet chat in some favorite nook. You come on such scenes of breathtaking beauty frequently. The falls and tumbling rapids of this river are favorite spots with residents and visitors. In contrast with the roar of the waters in their wild surging over the great rocks, the quiet pools a little farther down are so inviting that the youngsters and the older folks too are lured to paddle about its edges. It's part of the magic of the North Woods that causes sedate mothers and fathers to forget their years and to again enjoy youthful pleasures. And, of course, there's the ubiquitous picnic lunch. Nothing or anything is the occasion for eating in the North Country. <laughs> that perpetual appetite requires frequent satisfying. And what better excuse for lunching than such surroundings as these? Deep in the woods, near an appealingly beautiful river. Just one of the natives looking things over. A pet of the corner storekeeper and a friend with everybody but a little rough in his ideas of play. Uh-oh, it looks like he's a little out of his depth. But he made it, and here's his pal to meet him. Did I say something about being rough? But he hears a sound and the scrimmage is off. The clink of a bottle is music to his ears. He associates that sound with just one thing, pop, and does he love it. Here we are, just in time to catch the finish of a canoe race between Indians on the famous Flambeau Reservation. This is only one of many interesting things they do for the entertainment of summer visitors. In their villages, we find attractive native craftsmanship. Moccasins, beads, bark work, and other unique mementos for us to lug away. But don't tarry too long. The circle is forming around the drummers, and these Chippewa Indians, garbed in their colorful beaded buckskins, reenact the ancient ceremonial dances of their tribe. <laughs> delightful thrills of the woods country is to come unexpectedly on wild deer and see them bound away with their comic bouncing gallop as they take alarm. In the early morning or evening along the shores of lakes and rivers or at the edge of the woods you encounter them frequently. 
Look closely. Here's a doe with her fawn. You can just see the little fellow in the tall grass. If you move slowly and quietly, it is nothing unusual to be able to approach quite close, as their natural curiosity will hold them while you get a good view. While this country is an unspoiled wilderness, yet the luxuries and comforts you have been accustomed to are readily obtainable. Quaint, attractive little towns like this are easily reached and have stores well stocked with supplies of every nature. When the sun goes down, the warmth of day gives way to the pleasant coolness of the night, and around cheery log fires all gather for gossip, games, and plans for the morrow. But before tumbling into the clean, comfortable beds awaiting, some may wish to seek a little nightlife for contrast. And it isn't far away. Here we are. Music, dancing, gaiety, and all the attractions of the city. to leave the beloved Northwoods country with a memory of happy, fresh young voices raised in song. I hope our little trip has given you some idea of the beauty and fascination of the North Woods. It's a country for the whole family. Natural, healthful enjoyment for every member, every minute of the day. The kind of country where you can get close to nature, yet don't have to rough it any more than you want to. Country that you want to go back to again and again, year after year. As someone said, most first-timers become confirmed old times and are glad of it. Perhaps one of the strongest reasons for this is that it's so easy to get through. Just step on a modern air-conditioned northwestern train, the fastest, safest, most comfortable way to go. You can leave Chicago in the afternoon on the 400 or the Flambeau and be up there the same evening or take a comfortable overnight train. <laughs> 